Hello viewers, welcome to 2CBN TV. My name is Ivy Getanda. Just before we proceed, please ensure you like, subscribe and share. And right here with you is a show entitled Unlock Yourself with Christ. I repeat, Unlock Yourself with Christ. And in this show, it will be a series whereby we will try to reevaluate ourselves and try to look at issues that we face ranging from depression, suicide, finding our identity, finances, to issues of stress and trauma and get to find out how we can be unlocking ourselves from these situations. Because these situations lock us and we feel like there is a padlock that has been locked and we can't get out of it. How can we get out of it? And with us today, we have a show entitled Unlocking Yourself with Christ. But this time, this time round, with Christ. Welcome to this show entitled Unlocking Yourself. And our first show will be Identity. What is your identity? Hello viewers, welcome to today's show entitled Your Identity. And on the series Unlock Yourself with Christ, our guest today is OJ Jabuya. OJ is a friend of mine. He is a student at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology and he's pursuing computer science. He is a servant of God and a friend to man. We are so glad to have him here today. Welcome OJ. There's something interesting about his name. It's not an, uh, an acronym or some initials like IMG. His name is OJ. It's a full name. It's not like um, Omondi Jr. or Ondieki Jakababa. His name is OJ. It's a full name. So I'd like to invite him to introduce himself in the best way he can. Thank you, IB. Uh, hi, viewers. My name is OJ Jabuya. Yeah, so uh, if you can't use OJ, uh, Jabuya is also uh, an option. And I'm glad to be on the show today. Aha, uh -huh. OJ is OJ EY. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. welcome OJ to this show. And welcome viewers as well to this show as we discuss our identity. Right before we begin, we are going to pray and I'll pray. Let's pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we come before you and we acknowledge that you are our God. As we are going to discuss about who we are, our identity, I pray that you may guide us and that you may be with us even as we begin this first show of the Unlock Yourself series. Guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, viewers. It is uh, an honor to be here with you. Just before we proceed, if you haven't liked, su subscribed or shared, please ensure you do so and we'll be in touch. So our topic for today is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Identity, right before you begin or do anything, you need to understand who you are. You need to know who exactly you are. Mm -hmm. So OJ, yes. who are you and what is identity? Before we talk about mm -hmm. uh, identity, mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about a few things that will be able to set the table and create a foundation for us to understand identity in full length. Yes. Uh, there are four philosophical questions which ages and through ages and ages since uh -huh. have always rung in the human mind. Uh -huh. The question of origin, uh -huh. meaning or purpose, uh, morality mm -hmm. and destiny. Mm -hmm. Origin, mm -hmm. where does man come from? Mm -hmm. Meaning or purpose, mm -hmm. why is he here? Mm -hmm morality mm -hmm. or while he's here what rules of engagement are, is he supposed to use mm -hmm. how will he tell what is good from what is bad mm -hmm. and finally destiny where is man headed to mm -hmm. after all is said and done mm -hmm. these questions are very fundamental uh -huh. and uh, most of the social problems juvenile and delinquency mm -hmm. uh, come from uh, they are as a result of many people not being able to answer these questions. Uh -huh. Songs have been sung, poems have been written, uh, books have been written, uh, myths, uh -huh. even religions have been built just to address these four, four questions. questions. And mm -hmm. for us to be able to talk about identity, I will focus on one of them, which is origin. origin. Uh -huh. Just how essential is our knowledge of the past? 
a story is told of an African man mm -hmm. who, during the dark days of slavery, mm -hmm. stood erect when uh, his fellows bent over their tasks. Mm -hmm. He was lashed repeatedly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he did not bend. He, they cast and threatened him, but he did not flinch, he did not yield. Mm -hmm. And when he was asked why, he said, I am the son of a chief. Wow. The knowledge of his background mm -hmm. gave him a sense of identity and mm -hmm. security. Ah. And this had a definite bearing on mm -hmm. his behavior. Mm -hmm. Sociologists say that much of the root cause mm -hmm. to social misbehavior is mm -hmm. traceable to uh, broken homes and mm -hmm. lack of pride in one's ho origin. Yeah. So uh, as they usually say, the soil of human origin mm -hmm. is discernible in mm -hmm. her sons. Wow. And when I'm faced with uh, questions, big questions in life, I mm -hmm. go back to the book that has satisfactory answers to all the questions I have in life, uh, the Bible. The Bible. So what does the Bible have to say about our origin? Mm -hmm. It is interesting and comforting to mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. that uh, the Bible tells us that we come from a supreme being mm -hmm. who is the source of all of life in itself, of all creation. Mm -hmm. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says, For by him were all the things, things created yes. in heaven and, and on earth. earth, whether they be thrones mm -hmm. or dominions mm -hmm. or powers mm -hmm. or principalities, uh, they were created by him mm -hmm. and for him. Yeah. So we originate from God. Mm -hmm. God is our origin. origin. Uh, 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 Genesis 2 verse 7 says, And the Lord God breathed into the nostrils to his nostrils the man. breath of life, and man became a, a living, living soul. soul. So mm -hmm. it is very, it is, it is comforting, it mm -hmm. is beautiful, it mm -hmm. is... Uh, awesome to know that we come from God mm -hmm. and not from the slime pits mm -hmm. as suggested by evolutionists. Mm -hmm. it, but not from the slime pits as suggested by evolutionists, uh -huh. okay. but from the life-giving hands of a loving God. Wow. So uh, you are trying to emphasize that our identity draws is, uh, comes from four main aspects. Yes. Our origin, our meaning in life, our morality, and finally, our destiny, right? Yes. And uh, you've given us an example of background that we have, which comes from God, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And that should give us a uh -huh. sense of identity. Uh -huh. That should give us a sense of security. Mm -hmm. It is even what's more is the, that and significant is mm -hmm. that we have the image of God in us. Wow. We Amen. were created. Mm -hmm. Uh, God-like. Mm -hmm. Even when we lost this, uh, the likeness, most of the likeness mm -hmm. because of sin, mm -hmm. God still formulated a plan for us that, for us, mm -hmm. that he will adopt us back as his children. Mm -hmm. So Amen. our identity is we are the children of God mm -hmm. by creation mm -hmm. and again by adoption. adoption. That's our identity. Amen. Uh, thank you so much for that, for that uh, illustration of our origin. When I think about our identity myself, I always think about God as well as our creator. And God is the only person who has our manual of how we should operate. It's like, it's like a, a scientist who has invented some machine and he's written a manual of how the machine works. Mm -hmm. The scientist is the only person who knows how best the machine works. True. The same way God is the only person who knows how best we work True. because he's the one who has our manual. Case in point, uh, when we were born as individuals, as OJ, mm -hmm. as Ivy, God was right there in the delivery delivery room and he was very happy because ah OJ has now come into the world mm -hmm. now my purpose will be fulfilled in the world ah Ivy is now born I am happy and I'm excited now she has arrived in the planet I think that thought should uh, energize us and give us a good affirmation that God is our creator and he is happy and he knows that we are here Yes. He, it's not like we are here by accident. Mm -hmm. He's aware that someone somewhere is right now seated somewhere in Nairobi, Nakuru, and I'm the one who brought them there. And 
Jeremiah mm. says that yes. uh, he knew me even before, before I was born. I was born. Mm. Exactly. Our identity draws us back to who God is. So existence didn't happen by chance. Yes. yes. Wow. Thank you so much for giving us that elaborate uh, uh, illustration of what our identity is. Our identity is found in God. Thank you. Uh, but as we live as Christians, I'm sure you have uh, gone through this and you have seen people who have gone through this. There are certain circumstances that make us lose our identity. Mm -hmm. And along the way, we tend to forget who we are. We tend to forget, ah, when I was younger, I used to go to church. I used to do this and that, right? Yes. What are some of these circumstances that make us lose our identity you can give us an example of probably what you've seen or what you've gone through what are some of them that you think uh, i want to illustrate it uh, this way mm -hmm. as we try to find and define our identity mm -hmm. we will be presented with value systems mm -hmm. different value systems mm -hmm. the value system that has been defined mm -hmm. by god in his word mm -hmm which we should uh, uh, buy into. Mm -hmm. And then there was this, these other value systems that have been uh, presented by the world. Yeah. And by buying into it, it defines our sense of identity and ultimate worth. Mm -hmm. Many people, many people, many Christians who should actually cling and who should buy into the value system that has been prevent by, presented by God's word. Mm -hmm. Because courtesy of our sinful nature, mm -hmm. we find the value systems presented by the world to be more attractive, attractive. than the ones that we have. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we lose ourselves, we lose our identity. Mm -hmm. We buy into another identity. Uh. And... Uh, Maybe I will just mention a few examples. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, the reason why mm -hmm. uh, that innocent boy who was brought up in a well-raised home mm -hmm. is now trying drugs mm -hmm. and considering cheating in exams mm -hmm. and is now delinking himself from his faith roots and mm -hmm. values which now seem to be a hindrance mm -hmm. for, for him to be a part of the group mm -hmm. that seems to have it. That girl dressing the way she's dressing, mm -hmm. is it because she gets her sense of identity and ultimate worth from what her friends will say about how she dresses mm -hmm. than what God will say about her dress? Okay. Why, uh, maybe, could it be that the reason why... Mm. Uh, young men in their 40s, in their 30s, whom we'd expect to be strong and virile, uh -huh. are now suffering from old age diseases mm -hmm. like uh, high blood pressure and okay. depression, uh -huh. ostensibly because they are trying, they are getting their sense of worth from mm -hmm. comparing themselves to their peers who seem to have made it in life. Ah. Why is the church choir singing the way it is singing? Is it because they get their sense of worth mm -hmm. from the amens they get from the audience, from the likes they get on YouTube, from mm -hmm. the invites they get from time to time, mm -hmm. so much so that they will be willing to sneak in beats and dance mm -hmm. rather than sing the way God will have its music be? Wow. Okay. Why? And Christians all over the world mm -hmm. are losing their peculiarity. Mm -hmm. They are losing their identity mm -hmm. uh, by letting uh, lose the guard that they have mm -hmm. on their principles, on their doctrines, on their beliefs, which, which in the first place make them peculiar. Ah. Yeah? Because they are getting their sense of worth from the world, the rest of the world, mm -hmm. which would otherwise see them as weird or so extremist. Uh -huh. yes. So our trying to copy others makes us lose our peculiarity, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. And as we lose our peculiarity, it is, in other words, trying to lose our identity. Scripture tells us in uh, 1 Peter 2.9, you are a chosen generation, mm -hmm. a royal priesthood, yes. God's chosen people, that you may declare the wonderful works of him who brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And anytime we tend to move away from that marvelous light, then 
we are ideally losing our identity. Okay. Yeah, from uh, what you have tried to explain to us. And I also think some of the ways we may lose our identity, uh, just to give uh, examples of real-time experiences, yes. is things like peer pressure. You tend to uh, see uh, your friends doing something and they influence you to do it so much and you feel like, ah, let me just do it. Peer pressure is everywhere, even in church. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you're just in church, you, church is over, your friend comes and tells you, OJ, uh, can we go to, uh, there's a place in Juja called Green Savannah. Can we go to Green Savannah and just stay there for like two hours? That's another form of peer, peer, peer pressure, pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Another one is uh, a, a lot, there's a lot, uh, sometimes you get to financial crisis, as we'll discuss next week. A uh, financial crisis makes you feel like you are so insecure. The, another aspect, mm -hmm. insecurity. You feel like you are so insecure and some fear comes into you mm -hmm. and you, f you forget who you really were. Mm -hmm. So some of these prevailing challenges that we go through bring something called insecurities. And when you have these insecurities in your life, they tend to draw you away from God. True. True, mm -hmm. exactly. Thank you. Uh, that... Uh, since we have tackled this aspect that um, bring us, uh, draw us away from God, it brings an idea uh, called the identity crisis. And um, through my life, I used to think identity crisis is something racial. And uh, it's about um, if you're uh, white and you're in Africa, then you have an identity crisis because you're speaking in Swahili, but your skin is not black. Or the other way around. Mm -hmm. I used to think identity crisis is just racial or tribalistic is it really like that well before we continue we will take a short break and we will come back to find out whether our identity crisis or the identity crisis is really racial or it is there is more to it than we just see thank you for being with us through the short time we were please grab a fruit grab a snack and come back much stronger as we find out our identity in Christ. Thank you so much. Hello, my viewer. Welcome to 2CBN Television. My name is Lydia, presenting today's poem, 2CBN, Saving Souls. Proclaiming the three angels' message in this media technology age. Reaching out to all nations, that is our main mission. Bringing hope to the world by sharing God's holy word. Shedding light to all souls, turning souls into Pauls. While the enemy surely tries to use media against God's cause, with the word of truth we rise, teaching men to love God's laws to CBN through television and internet and volunteers ready at work to spread the gospel we are set. Please remember to subscribe and click that notification bell and like and share. Hello viewers, welcome back again. In case you are new here, please ensure you like, subscribe and share this video. And we are talking about identity. This is a show entitled Unlock Yourself with Christ. We are going to proceed with this show and uh, we'll continue. Uh, we started with talking about what our identity is and we found out that our identity revolves around four things. That is your origin, meaning, morality and destiny. destiny. And then we went forward to understand what are some of the circumstances that make us lose our identity as Christians and as young people. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, we have mentioned the identity crisis. I'd like us to go straight to find out what is this identity crisis. OJ, if someone came to you and asked you and told you, but they, OJ, I, I don't know who I am. I'm trying to find myself. I, I just can't get it. I can't find myself. What would you advise them? Or rather, what would you tell them? Someone is in that state. Please make it clear to us and uh, uh, outline how, what is this identity crisis? Does it really exist? Or is it just the racial thing, like we said? Identity crisis is a crisis that 
cuts across uh, all ages, all, all ages. people, I think. Uh -huh. It's not something that is just racial. Yes, uh, thank you. I will tell you a story about a friend of mine I met recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in high school together. Mm -hmm. We were not just acquaintances. We were not, he was not just somebody I knew. Mm -hmm. He was a friend that oh. we shared a lot of history. We uh -huh. were classmates. Uh, for a time, he was a desk mate, mm -hmm. and more importantly, we share the same beliefs. We were mm -hmm. both Adventists, uh -huh. and people knew us as Adventists. Okay. And I witnessed, as I saw him steer through the faith storms that had beset many high school teens at mm -hmm. that time, and it was as as such uh, with so much history you'd mm -hmm. expect that we would have a lot to talk about mm -hmm. nearly four years after high school. After high school, uh -huh. but actually we didn't. I, I was surprised uh -huh. because uh, he had changed so much changed. in language, mm -hmm. in his demeanor, mm -hmm. in his behavior, and everything about him had changed. He was mm -hmm. now using the cursing language. Mm -hmm. He actually had a roll of bang in, in his lips, oh. and it it was as the change was as disturbing as was rapid, mm -hmm. and it led me into thinking. What is this? What is this about uh, life? Why is it that when people try to find themselves, they get to get lost? They lose they their lose identity mm -hmm. uh, somewhere along the way, mm -hmm. and it is just this identity crisis. Ah, so maybe I can give another example as well. There is a, a friend of mine I grew up with. Mm -hmm. uh, she's actually my cousin. I came to realize much later that we are related. And we used to go to church together, sing in Adventurous, Pathfinder, and we were so vibrant. We would talk about how in future we would become uh, good women and uh, leaders in society. But along the way, uh, we went to different schools after primary school. We went to different schools and mm -hmm. she went to another school. Immediately she finished that school. She was different. That brings another aspect, just before we get to the real aspect of what identity crisis is, our environment influences our identity as well. Mm -hmm. If you allow the environment to influence you, then you will be changed. But if True. you are constant in an ever-changing environment, then your identity will stay still. True. So for this lady, uh, right now, we cannot converse uh, as we used to, like you said, with your friend. And I relate to that story very well. And I know most of us have such friends. What can we do to get our friends out of that, we, out of such a situation? We will get to that when, in the next uh, conversation, which is how do we, now that we understand that there's an identity crisis in amongst youths, amongst uh, our friends and families and neighbors and everyone, how can we uh, regain our identity? How do we, how do we uh, reclaim ourselves again? Uh, b before you even talk about regaining our identity, yes. I'd like to say something about identity crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, it is that period during which you are uncertain. There is uncertainty and confusion mm -hmm. uh, about your sense of identity mm -hmm. so that you are insecure about it because mm -hmm. of the change of uh, the aims that you had. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'll put it more practically because of the change in the sense of where you place Will your you sense place of yourself? worth. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So if you place your sense of worth in your friends, yeah. then whatever they say is what, what will, will influence, influence how you, you become. Exactly. Yes. So uh, I think we should consider that. About regaining your identity, uh -huh. I will just trail it from that. Or oh, There is a saying that goes, by beholding, we, we become. become. So mm -hmm. what you behold you become. with time, you become. You become yeah. And for us, to, uh, for us to be like Jesus, then mm -hmm. we have to behold Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Uh, there's a story of, in the Bible of a man called Asaph. Yes. Asaph was one of the chief musicians mm -hmm. uh, during the time of David. Yeah. And he's, he's written a story that found its way into the Bible. Mm -hmm. So inspiring was mm -hmm. he uh, that he was he spoke with brutal honesty, ah. and God be blessed because of him. Uh, in seventy, 
the 73rd Psalm, Psalm 73, mm -hmm. Psalm, uh, Asaf talks about how he, he got attracted into the allures of the world. Mm -hmm. He looked at his peers, he looked at those who found their way and means mm -hmm. uh, through mm -hmm. wicked means mm -hmm. to, to achieve in life and he looked at how they succeeded mm -hmm. and indeed he was attracted mm -hmm. and for a time as he beheld them mm -hmm. he he wanted to be like them oh. to use the quick fix the shortcut the mm -hmm. easy road and succeed in life in that manner mm -hmm. but then in verse 17 mm -hmm. he tells us until he went to the sanctuary oh. is when he knew their end wow. so how do we regain our identity until, until we, we go, go to, to the, the sanctuary. sanctuary yes wow. that's a very good example of how we can regain our identity as christians and um, also uh whatever as we as we try to regain our identity let us try to remember and know that our value and our worth as children of god doesn't decrease based on someone's uh, inability to see our worth you True. see if someone can't mm -hmm. see you as a special person it doesn't mean you are not special mm -hmm. it means you are special still because god has said it mm -hmm. so anytime you f you want to go back to god always remember that god is your father and you are his child and you can still go back to him so what another way i can uh, also add is by telling yourself positive things and reminding yourself that oj i am oj mm -hmm. i am a son of god and I can do this, and this is nothing. I am Ivy, I can do this. I am Joseph, I am whosoever you are. Just know that you are a son of God and go back to the sanctuary. It is never too late. Uh, you've mentioned Song of Asaph is in uh, Psalms written by David, and it has reminded me of uh, David. What is one uh, attribute, attribute of David we all know? He's a man after? After God's after own God's heart. Own heart. Mm -hmm. But... This David, how many evil things did he do in God's eyes? A lot. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the, Bib the Bible still tells us that he is a man after God's own heart. So no, no one's case is too desperate or too bad to be recognized by God because you can always go back to God as many times as you want because mm -hmm. his gates are open to us all and we are his children. That is how we can gain gain our identity as as Christians and uh, since we have learned how to regain this identity yeah. what are the advantages of being uh, having our identity and basing our identity in Christ because someone uh, may be wondering okay I know myself but uh, my identity is not in Christ what are the advantages of basing it in Christ and living a Christ-like character compared to the others who decide to go the other way what are some of the advantages? Uh, just to put it into co context so mm -hmm. that we will be able to see the benefits in a more clearer way, mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about uh, something that affects mostly the youth. Uh -huh. It's called the quarter life crisis. Quarter life crisis. The quarter life crisis is the period around from 13 to around 35, 35 years, years of age sure. where we're making the big decisions of life. Yeah. We are deciding what career will, uh -huh. uh, will I pursue mm -hmm. or what role will God play in my life mm -hmm. uh, who, who will I choose to be my partner in mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and as we make these decisions yes. we do not have all the experience we do not have all the resources that will help us to make the best decisions mm -hmm. we do not have all the resources to and experience mm -hmm. to know which career is best for us mm -hmm. we do not have all the experience about God mm -hmm. to know uh, if this is the faith that I should, I should cling to. Mm -hmm. We do not have all the resources and experience about anyone to know this is the best partner for me. Mm -hmm. And as a result, mm -hmm. during this period, mm -hmm. many youths tend to withdraw. Mm -hmm. And when you find yourself uh, in, in the middle of the night scrolling through the uh, Facebook page and uh, Instagram pages, and you see your friends mm -hmm. and you think that life is happening for others mm -hmm. and is not happening for, for you, you, then you are probably having an identity crisis. Uh -huh. So therefore, it is important uh -huh. to get to know yourself, mm -hmm. to know 
your identity. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you know that you are a child of God, mm -hmm. it determines how you think, Amen. what you dress, mm -hmm. what you eat, mm -hmm. what you speak. Mm -hmm. When you don't know that you are the child of God, uh -huh. you will either try to live a life co coping other people mm -hmm. or chasing after the wind. Mm -hmm. But when you know uh, what God has done for you through the merits of Christ uh, on the cross, mm -hmm. then you are put at ease. Amen. You will have a sense of worth within yourself. Wow. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, fellow viewers, if you have any comments or questions, please ensure you type them down and we will respond to them promptly. If you have questions to OJ or to I, please do so and we will respond to them. We are almost coming to a close and uh, through the study, we have learned that our identity draws us back to God because he created us in his image mm -hmm. and his likeness. So that means we have some of his attributes and we are, we are his children by creation first and by adoption, mm -hmm. right? And whatsoever situation we are in or stuck in and feel like we are lost and locked down, like there's a padlock that has locked us down in that situation, always remember that you are a child of God. Mm -hmm. And a savior died on the cross for you mm -hmm. and he will unlock you from that situation you're in. And we, as we come to a close, I'd like um, OJ to just uh, uh, finish up. And uh, what would you tell one person who feels like they're lost? Their future is uh, nothing. They don't, see, they don't see anything. They're just there. And they are seated. A corona is here. They don't know what to do. They've just lost themselves, ideally. I, I know of case, case, uh, case scenarios where people are in such situations and we have, we've had, and actually, just to go back, when you look at people's uh, updates on uh, social media, you'd notice that some people, most people are depressed. Some of us are um, lonely. You'd notice from the way they post their statuses that I'm feeling like this, I'm feeling like this, they're feeling lost. Mm -hmm. What can you say to such a person who feels that way? I will just ask you one question. Mm -hmm. What are you struggling to be known by? Mm. The little boy with the most toys? The young man with the most networks? The lady with the figure to kill for? The young man with the voice to laugh for? <laughs> the old man with the sleekest car in the village? <laughs> Are these the things that are giving you your identity? Let me give you one word for them. They are temporary. Mm -hmm. But this word, mm -hmm. living right in our hearts, mm -hmm. John says, Behold what manner, manner of, of love, love the, the Father, Father and as he mm -hmm. puts it beautifully, has lavished upon, upon us, us mm -hmm. that we should be called the, the children of God. God. That's our identity. And he mm -hmm. continues to say, it's for this reason that the world has not yet known us, for it has, it has not, not yet, yet known, known him. him. Wow. We should know that this is our identity and man cannot claim any greater dignity. Mm. So do not, do not uh, bend even when others are bending over their tasks. Stand tall. Stand tall when they lash you repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Stand tall when uh, they curse you and threaten you. Mm -hmm. Stand tall when they call you names and they think you're weird because you are the son of a king. That's wow. your identity. Wow, I feel motivated already. I, I just feel like I was the one listening to this on the other side and I jump up with joy. Yes, I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned that the world has not known us because they have not known him. Mm -hmm. And uh, any time we feel like we are stuck, always remember we have God right there with us. The same God who was there with Abraham is the same God who is here with us. And he will guide us and help us regain our identity. And uh, our series is entitled Unlock Yourself with Christ. In that place where you feel you're locked, you can't get out. Just know there's a way out because God has already made a way out. He has the solutions. He will get you out of that locked situation. Christ will come out and unlock 
you out of it and you will be a fulfilled Christian living according to the words of God. And uh, that was uh, our show. We have come to the end of it. I believe you enjoyed. Please ensure you uh, give in your comments, your questions. We will respond to them. And uh, thank you, OJ, as well, for being with us during this first show. And may the Lord richly bless you. Thank you, fellow viewers, for being with us and listening from the start of it to the end of it. And as we come to the close of it, I'll ask OJ to pray with us. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us our identity, that we are your children. So we pray that you may help us vindicate this identity, both by preaching it and living it. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye. See you next time. <laughs>